As a video editor, I am constantly in need of a good audio visualizer. Whether I'm creating a podcast or a music video, it seems like there's always a situation where an audio visualizer is extremely helpful. Unfortunately, with the built-in tools inside of Final Cut Pro, that's simply just not possible. That is why I am so excited to share this powerful new update from my friends over at Boris Effects who are sponsoring this video. Recently on the channel, I showed their new B Reactor tool, which works perfectly in tandem with their continuum package for Final Cut Pro, which has hundreds of different effects and mocha tracking and all sorts of things. But now it has a fully dedicated audio visualizer. This is my time. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to build your own podcasting audio visualization setup. Now before I show you all the steps of building your own audio visualizer, it should be noted that there are over 50 different presets for you to start from. So if you're struggling creatively or you just want to save yourself a whole bunch of time, all you need to do is of course apply the audio visualizer effect, bring in your audio, which I will show all those steps in just a little bit, but then you can go up here to the top and select FX editor. And here on the left hand side, you will see all of the different presets they've created. You can select one, you can apply it, and then you can even go in and change all of the settings to your liking to get it custom to your own project. But if you want to start from the ground up, the next part of this tutorial is for you. I'm going to go ahead and just bring down this audio from this podcast I did recently with OWC. I will have a link down below if you're interested. Then from there, I'll go up to my generators and look up the custom generator. This should give us this nice black screen, which we can apply down on the timeline and we'll just extend it out for the duration of our video. Finally, we can go back over to our browser and drop in a photo that we want to animate and I'll go ahead and expand this out for the duration of our video. From there, we can go on over into our effects and look up the shape mask effect. I'm going to apply this onto this photo and we could drag the curvature all the way up to 100% and set the radius to 1000. After that, let's take the feathering down to zero. That should give us a perfect circle which we can use and we can scroll down and go ahead and scale this down to something like 40%. Now that that's set up, go ahead and right click on that photo and select new compound clip and push OK. This will compound everything so that when we apply effects, it doesn't cut off any weird edges in any way. I'm going to set the opacity on this photo down to 10% so we can very easily see the audio visualizer happening underneath. So let's go ahead and add the audio visualizer. We'll scroll down through our effects and locate BCC time. Clicking on that, you'll see BCC plus audio visualizer. Go ahead and just click and drag that onto whatever layer you want. In this case, I'm going to add it to this custom black layer. Now that we've done that, you should see all of these options in your video inspector. The option you're looking for is this select audio button. So clicking that, we can now load in whatever audio file we want to work with. It should be noted that typically you need a .wav file. So you'll see that I have this .m4a version. That was not working, so I had to convert it over inside of Compressor to a .wav before importing it. Selecting that, I'll go ahead and push open, and now that's been imported. It looks like nothing's happened, but if I push play, it was right at the, the perfect time. You'll see how that's given us a really easy to use audio visualizer. But this is the most base level version of this audio visualizer and we can take it so much further. Scrolling through our options, the first one you will see is the generator. I'll go ahead and expand that and find a peak in our audio file that we can use to reference. Scrolling through the generator options, the first thing we can select is the audio style. Currently it is set to frequency, which is just down here at the bottom of the screen. We can also change it over to waveform and this is going to inherently give us a different style. Now you can set this to whatever you like, but for this video, I want to go ahead and leave it at frequency. Underneath that is the vertical style. You'll see how it's selected as dots, which means that these are going to be separated out throughout our scene. We could also change this over to a single dot option and now you'll just only see the peak points of those lines. But finally, my personal favorite is bars. And by selecting that, we now have these solid bars working as an audio visualizer. I'm gonna go ahead and set this to dots for right now as there are some other options that are locked behind setting it to bars. But from there, we can change the dot style. Right now it's set to rectangle. We can change it over to an ellipse, a circle, or a half circle. 
So I'll go ahead and select half circle and just see how that looks. And you can see how they're kind of flattened off at the bottom of each of these lines. Underneath that is our resolution. Now the resolution indicates how many bars are happening across here on the screen. So right now there are 32 bars happening. If we wanted to, we could go ahead and change this all the way up to 512. And you'll notice how this has completely smoothed out the lines in a really nice way. I'll go ahead and set this back to 32 for this video. But underneath that is our scaling options. I'll go ahead and just drag the scale up and you'll see how that actually increases the amplitude of each of these lines. So if you really wanna fill out your space, you can bring that scale way up. I found that leaving it at 100 is a pretty solid point for this video. Underneath that is this width option, but you'll notice I don't have any control over that. That's because we're currently using half circle. If I change this over to something like rectangle, I can now drag up the width. And as I expand the width, you'll see how these lines have become connected. There's also this height option, which I can drag up and you'll see how the lines have now become a solid bar like they were previously. Next up is the density option. And if we drag this up, you'll notice how that's actually just shrinking the amount of space between each dot. And then underneath that is the roundness slider. So I can drag this up and now each of these look like a circle, which of course you can achieve with your dot style up here, or you can just round off the edges a little bit using that roundness slider. Next up is the taper options. So if I expand that, I'll go ahead and enable the taper. And you'll notice here at the bottom that a lot of these dots are larger than the dots happening at the top. We can make this even more apparent by setting this to relative. So now you can see how tiny these dots are getting near the top. We could also select dual axis so they're coming to a point. And then finally we could invert this so if we want the dots to be smaller near the bottom or larger near the top. Now something to note is that the taper options do not work when you set this over to a bar. So just keep that in mind if that's a setting you ever want. Underneath that is the peak hold option. I'm gonna go ahead and enable this and you can see how this has left a remnant of wherever the peak was happening. So if I were to push play, I wasn't truly doing any professional editing. And you'll just notice how that leaves the peak sitting there. You can of course enable how large the scale is on those peak points. You can set your fall off for how long you want them to be there. And you could even change the color on that peak by setting that right here. I'm gonna go ahead and disable the peak hold and underneath that is the waveform option. You'll notice that I don't have any control over this until I set this back over to waveform settings. Now that it's under waveform, we can change this from absolute value over to range. We could set the duration on this waveform so it's lasting a bit longer on the screen and we can even offset it with this slider. At that time, a lot of professionals were jumping ship going to Premiere. So you can just start to see the amount of flexibility that this plugin provides. I'm gonna go ahead and set this back over to frequency and continue through these different options. Collapsing the waveform, you'll see the frequency tuning. This is where you can really control exactly how much amplitude each part of your waveform is receiving. So we could bring the bass way up if we wanted to. We could bring the mid ranges up higher. We could even bring up the treble so that the highest parts of my voice are really showcasing here on our audio visualizer. But then underneath all of this is a smoothness slider. So if you find that these peaks are a little bit too severe or if you want them to be more severe, we can drag the smoothness slider and you'll see how that adjusts these waveforms accordingly. And then finally at the very bottom is a color option. So I'll go ahead and change that over to something like this orange color. But before you change the colors there, you might wanna hold off for just one second because there's also a gradient option which I strongly prefer. So. Going down, we can go ahead and expand out the gradient and enable this. And now you'll see how there is a gradient happening over the different sections of our graph. We could change this from top to bottom over to left to right to really see it working. You can of course change the colors on each of these. You could adjust the size of the gradient. So if you want there to be a larger difference between the colors, you can adjust the angle. So if you drag this up, you could actually animate the gradient playing throughout the different sections of your audio visualizer. Then you can also adjust the individual positions of your gradient by using these different control points here. Now the next option is this pre-transform. Now this is important because sometimes with your audio visualizer, you need to make transformations that happen before the other effects are applied, like the mirror effect and polar warp. So there's not a lot for me to show here right now, but you can just adjust stuff like your position, scale, your rotation, your tumble. If you want this to look more 3D, you could even 
apply that tumble just a little bit like that. It's really up to you with all of these different options. But if we go into the mirror settings and enable this, you'll notice how now my audiograph is being mirrored. We could easily go into this position on the pre-transform and slide this over to the left hand side. And now this will allow us to set the exact position that we want to mirror out on the screen. You can also in the mirror settings adjust stuff like the center point. So we could slide this over to the right if we wanted to. We could adjust the angle. So if you set this over to negative 90 degrees, now this will be directly above giving us this really cool audio visualization effect. And there's also this edge mode. Currently it's set to no. So if I drag the center down, you'll see that nothing's really happening above this audio visualizer. But if you wanted to, you could change that edge mode from no over to tile. And if I continue to move the center down, you'll see that it just keeps on tiling that effect. We could also change it over to reflect, which is my favorite. So now it's essentially replicating whatever's happening down here up on top. So if I were to continue to move that center down, we have a full audio waveform happening right there. I'm gonna go ahead and disable the mirror effect for right now and take a look at Polar Warp, which is my absolute favorite effect in this entire plugin. Enabling Polar Warp essentially polarizes the entire effect, giving us this nice circle that is happening on our audio visualizer. Going underneath that, we can adjust stuff like the angle, so if you want it to be pointing in a different direction. There's also angle repeats. So right now it's just a single entity, but if I were to drag up angle repeats, you'll see how this is giving us more of the exact same thing in our circle. We can adjust stuff like the stretch in the X and Y, but there's also this inner radius slider. So if I drag this out, you'll notice that the inside radius of our audio visualization is no longer over the top of our photo. Then if you find that some of your lines out here on the outer edge are sticking out a little bit too far for your liking, you could adjust the outer radius. But you'll notice that as I bring this outer radius down, there are more and more iterations of our audio visualizer and maybe we just want the one. So that is due to the tiling settings here. I'll go ahead and just set this over to no on both and that will clean up those edges there. So now if I bring that outer radius in, you'll see how that's no longer causing that problem. And one last thing you can do is actually invert this outer radius so that it's going in on itself, which is really cool. Underneath that is the swirling angle. So if I drag this up, this is actually going to rotate the audio visualizer around whatever it's sitting around, which is really a cool effect. And you can adjust that swirling radius. So if you want more of it to be affected or less of it to be affected, it's really up to you. Underneath that is the global transform. So these are transformations that happen after the effects have been applied. This is important to know because if I were to enable this, this will give us these on-screen controls. And if I click and drag, you'll notice how it's cutting off at the edge here. So you really need to make sure that you're not going outside of the bounds if you apply this global transform effect onto something. Unless that's the effect you're going after. If that's the case, you could even scroll down here at the bottom and find this edge mode. Currently it's set to transparent. Let's set this over to reflect. And now we've essentially created a mirrored effect, which is really cool. You could have this going off into infinity. It's really up to you how to make this look. I'm gonna go ahead and disable the global transform for right now and just leave it as it is. So finally, after all of those settings comes the film glow. Now there are some really powerful and cool glow effects all built inside of Continuum. But if you want it all in one place, there's this film glow option. So let's go ahead and enable that. We'll click enable. You'll see how that's starting to create a nice glow here. Let's drag the desaturation down to zero. So now the actual audio visualizer is affecting the color of the glow. We could bring the intensity up if we wanted to. We could bring up the radius. It's really up to you how this looks. I'm really happy with how that is looking for right now. So I'll go ahead and collapse that. So now that we've added in all of these effects, we still have this black background. To fix that, we'll just go into our background settings and you'll see we have our background options. We can select a source, which is the original layer that we applied this to, a solid and a gradient. I'm going to go ahead and set it over to none. Now it looks like nothing is really going on, but if I add in a background, you can see now we have the option of whatever background we like for this audio visualizer. So now that we've done that, we can go ahead and increase the opacity on our photo so we can clearly see it as well as that audio visualizer happening in the background. But if we wanted to take this a step further, we could take a look at the BCC continuum package, which has Beat Reactor. Now I've created an entire video on this. I'll link it at the very end of this video. If we use Beat Reactor, we could animate this photo to increase in scale with our audio. 
To do that, we can go ahead and take a look at BCC Perspective and apply BCC plus Transform. Scrolling down, you'll see the Beat Reactor option. Go ahead and enable that. Then you'll see we have this Select Audio button. Clicking on that, we can go ahead and load in the exact same audio element. And you'll also notice that it's given us this audio graph. Let's change that by going to show graph and setting that to no. Scrolling down further, you'll see that we have apply parameter. We want this to apply to the scale. So we'll change it from unused over to scale X and then additionally we'll set it over to scale Y. Now right now it is increased in scale way too large. So let's go ahead and expand out options A and set the output max to something super low like four. Then we can scroll a little bit further down and do the exact same thing with audio parameter B. We'll set this down to four. So if we were to push play, you'll see how this is animating beautifully with our audio visualizer. But for me, it was perfect because it was professional editing software with a very minimal interface that I could just very clearly understand. Now this comes included in the continuum package for Final Cut Pro, which has two different purchasing options. One is you can go the subscription route if you don't want to throw in all your cash at the same time, but you can also get a perpetual license if you just choose new license from the purchase menu. I do have an affiliate link down below as well as a discount code as a thank you for watching this video. If this video was helpful to you, then you may want to check out this video where I do a deep dive on Beat Reactor, which is all included in the Continuum FCP package from Boris FX. With that being said, thank you so much for watching, and I cannot wait to see you in the next one. This is my time.